So when Bruce said, would you like to, to leave boiling hot California and come to balmy Washington, <laughs> D.C. For a, for a gathering, I couldn't say no because it's almost true. It's true enough to say that without his help and support, um, there wouldn't be uh, this book. Um, I, I wrote a first draft of uh, a, an essay version of this book um, in a Big Ideas publication that, that uh, First Focus put out. Um, and uh, then I served on the Obama transition team, and I basically junked much of what was there, but the frame remained. Um, talking about, about big ideas right now in Washington, D.C., is a little bit, feels a little bit like, you know, the guy who's going to play Chopin on the deck of the Titanic. Um, you know, it's a, it's a very, I don't have to tell you, it's a difficult time. And it's a difficult time in a variety of ways. Um, not, not just what's happening in the budget, but also the fact that the framing of kids' issues um, is extraordinarily narrow. Um, I, I summarize it as Diane Ravitch takes on Waiting for Superman um, as one version of this. And as we've heard, you know, it's, it's Medicare and, and not Medicaid that gets talked about. Um, I'm heartened by the half billion dollar early learning challenge grant. Um, it's what the Obama campaign promised. It's, it's what I worked on uh, when I was uh, on the transition team. It's great to see it come, come through. It's, it's a nice reminder that even in a really tough, miserable times, good things can, can, um, can happen. Um, let me say a bit about the genesis of the book, quickly lay out the ideas, and then, as Bruce said, um, start a conversation with him, and, and then I hope with you. You've been, you've been listening to a lot of good stuff this morning, but I hope to have that we can do more by way of conversation. Um, when I was on the transition team, um, there must have been 150 groups that came to see us, and they represented everybody under the sun. So it was the child care folks and the preschool folks and the people who cared about Native American Head Start and the Catholic schools and the high standards people and the voc ed folks and the community college. Right. Um, and um, because there were seven of us and 150 <coughs> of them, and because they all were entitled to a respectful hearing, we, we, did, we did what we call in public policy school the 48-hour analysis, except this is the 48-minute analysis. You had to read enough to, to be able to say something, uh, ask a, a, a useful question of these, these folks. And what I heard was a lot of people who cared a lot about their chunk of the kid. And we're really passionate about that. But what it was missing was, where was the child in this whole story? Where was the, where was the kid in general? What would, what would a real um, cradle to college and career policy look like? Uh, and so I did what I generally do uh, when I try to learn about something. Um, once upon a time a journalist, um, once upon a time a lawyer, um, I sort of forget that part of, uh, that part of me. Um, I went around the country and I looked at really great programs in really unlikely places. I mean, the, the high plains in New Mexico, the, the, the um, Rio Grande Valley, uh, which is one of the best preschool and um, small high school programs in the country. Uh, one of my favorite uh, was a, an early education center in Chicago in a neighborhood so rough that there was barbed wire uh, around the, the playground. Um, and what I found was great programs, but if you, if they, they weren't great systems. If you were lucky enough to be in the right neighborhood at the right time, you could get your kid into that one program. And then it, was, then it went away. So let's say you were a poor first time mom and you happened to be in a place that had the nurse family partnership and you had a nurse come into your house every week and talk about your life and talk about your kid's development, et cetera. Then it, you know, the second birthday, there was a birthday cake the kid blew out two candles and the nurse was gone. And there you were, right? You know, what was going to happen next in your, in your life? Um, or you happened to stumble into a really good preschool um, and you sort of, you disappeared. And you found, or you found, you know, a wonderful mentor, a wonderful champion, but you were in a really crap school system. Um, you know, I was, I was at, a, uh, at an event uh, put on by um, the I Have a Dream Foundation. This is this, you know, Eugene Lang comes up, stands in front of sixth grade class and says, you know, 
Um, I'm going to give you all in the inner city of New York, I'm going to give all of you college scholarships this class if you make it um, to college. It's a great idea. It's the Billionaires Club around the country. They support individual classes. One of the, st one of the graduates, one of those classes came and said, I happen to be in the third grade, you know, in the Flatbush neighborhood of Brooklyn when this program came to be. And I thought, that's great for her. But just what happened if she was in the second grade or the fourth grade or, you know, lived a block away or happened to be in Miss Smith's class and not Miss Jones' class. So I wanted to think about a system, not a bunch of programs, that met the, what I wound up thinking about is the golden rule of public policy. Every child deserves what we would want for a child that we love. Pretty straightforward. Uh, doesn't mean that every child gets to intern for Senator Menendez or go off to Paris and, you know, hang out with the director of the uh, Louvre, but it, you know, think not the, the Cadillac model that all anxious parents in this room want for their kids, but the Kia model, the, the good enough solid support system that really is going to give every kid in life a, a shot at succeeding, um, a strategy that would be a big lift but an affordable one. I mean, just a small side note. I remember one advocate for early education, uh, not known for being a compromiser, came to me and said, I think all the groups have come together. Uh, we've got an agenda that we're all agreed on that makes sense and that's practical. I said, fabulous, come in and talk to us. They did. I said, this is great. How much is it going to cost? $120 billion for, you know, early education. I thought, well, that's kind of a, as much a non-starter as the House budget um, resolution that just, uh, that just passed. Um, so, let me tell you what the I big ideas are. They're meant to be game changers. Um, they're meant, they have basis in evidence. I'm enough of a policy wonk to care about that. And they're the kinds of things that you can level up. They're not hothouse programs. So when you hear about, for, I'm, having written a book about preschool, I know where the seven to one in return on investment comes from. It comes, it's a wonderful idea. It comes from spectacular programs, teachers with master's degrees, tiny classes, etc. It's not the world we live in. But the world we live in is going to produce 2.73 to 1 return on investment. It's the best guess is what we have. Um, I think Warren Buffett would be really happy with a 3 to 1 return on investment. So, you know, we, we, we do well. We know how to do well. There's nothing new on the agenda. Uh, what's new is thinking of it as a system of supports. And there's not a sense that I have that, God, these are the only five items People can argue with me and say, that isn't important. What about that? Um, I listen to David Lawrence's agenda. I would sign on very happily um, to that. It's that you think about kids and not just this program for this category of children. So what are the five big ideas? Um, and in the book, I lay them out and tell you lots of stories, um, show how they're working. And let me briefly describe them and give you quick examples. The first, strong support for parents. You know, kids' first and most important educators. Um, we know that to be true, and early educators know that to be true. Parents, I've never met a parent who said, I've got it all locked. I know how to do it. I don't want any advice. I don't need any help. You know, rich, poor, middle class. You know, that's not the way people think. So there's a great unknown program that happens to be, you know, and has been around for 25 years you know, is existence in all of the UK and all of Australia, 17 random sample studies, big ones, um, which is a community changer, not a person changer. It's called Triple P, the Positive Parenting Program. Very simply, it's a training program for everybody who works with kids. You know, that could be the minister, the social worker, the principal, you know, the psychologist, the, anybody that um, a mom or dad would go and talk to. Uh, and it's designed to give those folks the skills to deal with things, very practical things. My child doesn't eat, my child doesn't sleep, my child is screaming all the time, my child is doing terribly in school, my child is getting picked on, my child is picking on other kids, I've got a developmentally delayed child and I don't know what to do. That kind of training coupled with lots of social marketing, get the word out to parents that this is there, use TV, use the local radio, you know, get the minister to say something from the pulpit, and then word of mouth spreads. You change that program, you're changing communities, not just individuals. And by the way, if somebody is looking for the cheap thing to do, and I'm about to talk to the U.S., uh, the, the mayors, the National Mayors Association, National Council of Mayors, 
This is a $15 a child 